Our final topic of this episode is our top five party games with a caveat, at least from my perspective. This whole theme of this episode is that we played, uh, you know, a ton of party games at Eric's birthday party. And these are games, I guess, you know, it's top five party games, but these are games that I like to play at parties, not necessarily a definitive list of the best party games. What about you? Is that kind of what you did? That's pretty much what I did. All right. Well, let's just go straight into it with my number five, Happy Salmon. Happy Salmon. Okay. Right. Though it's only six players, you can buy two copies of it, have up to 12, and they've got a new pack of cards that's going to have six new colors. Uh, This is just, it doesn't even matter that it's six players, though. You can have 50 people at a party. One time is all it takes for the entire place to be playing that game. Right. Even if they're not playing, they're watching. Right. What, 60 seconds each Mm -hmm. game? I mean, it's crazy. What do you think? Do you think this is a party game that you would... No, yeah, you could, like you said, multiple copies. I mean, it's you can play it with as many people as you want. I'm going to get like eight copies. We're going to play with 40 people. Whoa. <laughs> Math. <laughs> well, anyway, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's my number five. Happy Salmon. Sweet. Uh, My number five, Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's a party game because I like taking it to my parents. Remember, and- it's all about what you. Right, exactly. So, <laughs> um, and I do like trivia games in a sense, but obviously like something like Trivia Pursuit's a little too heavy. But whenever you take into account like games like Terra and Fauna and I think you played uh, America, it it's like a general knowledge and it's still kind of fun to, to I don't know, see the strategy and, and talk, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it ain't as fun, but I enjoy it. Like This is my list. But that's uh, fair. That's fair. Yeah. So and well, just a caveat. All our top five lists are always more of a top five favorite insert thing. Right. So this is really our top five favorite party board games or really more of like games to play at a party. Right. Which is kind of two separate things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's not a lot to say about it, but it's it's fun to learn about animals in America. That's but. fine. The only thing I think of with that is it's less players. I was about to say, I, I, is it only four? It, I mean, if it's not, it might be five. Yeah, so that's actually right as I was saying this. I was like, I don't yeah. know the player count on teams. it. Teams. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> you can play teams. Yeah. You should re- Unless you have this higher up on your list, you could replace that with Wits and, w- Wits and Wagers. Right. Anyway, my number four, Two Rooms and a Boom. Yes. This is more of a party style game. I really should have thought more about my list, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> Change it on the fly. Yeah. yeah. Two Rooms and a Boom is a game where basically you have... A group of terrorists and a group of presidential guys. Right. Anyway, the bomber has to kill the president. At the end of the game, you have to be in the same room as the president. You need two physical rooms to move between. Everybody gets a car and just runs around. It works better with literally as many people as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I've played it with, I think, in the 30s or 40s amount of people. Really? Convention? Yeah, at Dice Tower Con two years ago. Uh, basically before it released fantastic i mean there are so many people there's so many even if you don't play with tons of roles and you just have a bunch of basic people that's on the color of a team it's so good i mean it's there's some problems with it obviously but you know as a party game you can't really look too deep into design sometimes right other than if it's fun and that's what really i kind of like half and half with party games i like it to be really well designed but still be really fun right and I feel like this one is uh, is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number four is we talked about it already. Reverse raids. Oh yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a uh, uh, you know, I figure this might have been higher up on your list based on how you're talking about. It, but yeah, I'm interesting to see, interested to see the rest. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't know how many. I don't know if it has a player count on it either, but it doesn't matter. You can play I, it with as many as you want, really, or you could even have uh, multiple teams. I want to say it says four. Plus, because you at least need two people on each team. Yes. But that's kind of stupid because it's no longer reverse raids. It's just raids. But most of the time you're going to want at least six or eight and you can go above that to probably make it, you know, funner. Or like I said, if you get so many people, you could have three teams. I don't see why you couldn't have. There's no reason why. Right. So, but no, it. It's always fun to see everyone act all goofy and stuff. So reverse raids. I had a lot of fun with that. I it probably is on my short list. I would say. Yeah. My number three is One Night Ultimate Werewolf. All right. 
pretty much the game that we pull out every single time anyone has a party. Right, and evidently it's going to be more versions of the one nights because I think Vampire got pulled out last time, right? Yep. Well, yeah, there's uh, Daybreak, there's Vampire, Aliens is is in, uh, at least, I don't know if it's on Kickstarter yet or if it was or right. whatever. So, lots of versions of one night. It plays up to 10 people in 10 minutes, basically, and people just come and go each game. It's it's great. Yeah, and you, you play it multiple times, It's and it's fun, same amount of fun every time. Yeah, and, and the theme of my list is really everyone's kind of involved at all times. It's right. not like a solo experience in, in some way, but... Anyway, what's your number three? Yeah, okay. Yeah, again, taking into account player count, I did not research this, but it's mainly because it's code names, and it's mainly because it's uh, a lot of people think this is a party game, though. I, so uh, you're not, and it's a more strategic party game, but it takes so many people to make it worth playing. I guess is why it, I kind of threw it in my party game because I'm not going to play it unless probably at a party. I I agree with that. The only reason I didn't put it on my list, and I thought about it a lot, is specifically because of how quiet it can be. Right. And, you know, it was funny. As soon as you said keeping everyone involved, I was like, well, uh, uh, mine's different. But, I mean... I mean, it, it does go back and forth, but it, it's... Yeah. It, you are... You're taking time out at times, so... It's interesting. We have different approaches on this list. Right. Because, I mean, you're right. Some of those parties... Some of that party stuff could be a large family gathering, and it doesn't necessarily have to be loud and chaotic. Right. And, and like I said, my basis... My main basis on this game was just it takes a party to probably have the amount of people to make or, it worth playing yeah like you're not gonna play some of these games at game night so to speak right but, but you're if there's a party you're gonna be more open to playing them over top of something else right fair enough my number two is spyfall okay just nick i mean this is it was almost number one Matt. really but it's not spyfall is probably the only game on here that's not as much as what you what i was saying it's not loud and chaotic and it's not like there is a lot of quiet, but everyone is paying attention. I just thought of something really fun that should have put them on my list. I bet it's your one. But Probably. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Spyfall is, you know, one person's the spy. He's trying to figure out where he's at. So only really two people were involved at one time. The person asking the question and the person responding, but everybody else is listening and watching the mannerisms and stuff. So everybody still is involved. It's just not as communication involved you know right. it's not like yelling and stuff like that so spotfall you like spotfall right actually man i don't know <laughs> oh yeah no i actually i think i i i, I wasn't the biggest fan of it fair but enough. uh i see why people like it i just didn't care for it so how many did you only play it a couple of times that, that one session one when we played session, it a bunch of yes, times yeah typical how you do with them kind of games but yeah, yeah one one session multiple times Spotfall 2, two spies. Oh. We'll try it out. All right. Uh, my number two, you've already covered One Night Werewolf, so. Yeah, it's such a great game. It is a good game, so we Did, don't have to elaborate on it, but. Fair enough. What well, You know, one thing I will ask you about One Night, though. Wait, did you only play One Night Ultimate Werewolf, or have you, you haven't played Vampire or Daybreak, have you? Uh, No, yeah, I haven't got a chance to play Daybreak, so. Okay, well, the question I was going to ask you is how is it, how do you feel about mixing them and stuff? And I've done a little bit of that, but I almost feel like it's almost better unless you just play the crap out of it to like play just that one version. But per it's personal. I don't know. Also, oh, not don't mix Daybreak and uh, One Night. Daybreak and One Night's probably a little better, but almost like I actually yeah, day, that's probably the only exception. Not that there's like tons of. I'm acting like there's like 50 copies of this game. Right. Um, but Daybreak's a. I feel like if you're only playing Daybreak, it almost is better to add some of the original stuff in. But Vampire, I feel like it's its own game. And I'm not sure how that's going to be okay or how it's going to be to add it into the werewolf. Right. I don't know. It seems like it's going to be a little bit convoluted. Maybe it's more for an advanced players kind of thing. Yeah. So did you have any honorable mentions for this list, Matt? Yeah. Did you do your two? Yeah, Spyfall. That was okay. That was my fault. That's uh, my honorable mention was, uh, <clears throat> you know, now I think again the the player count. I put Sheriff of Nottingham, but that's because usually we played it at my parties. And, yeah, and whenever like my birthday party or something with my parents. Well, you got to imagine though, some people when they think party, they think 20, 30 people. Our parties really aren't that many. No, maybe up to ten, maybe fifteen. Right. 
I mean, I, to be honest with you, I I like lower player. Or, I like lower people at my party. I don't like fifty people in my. Well, house. I just think party game is like six plus, whereas like. Well, yeah, but I mean, I I. Sheriff of Nottingham is probably the one out that make short the list, and it would make or make it the exception because I feel like I agree with you. Sheriff of Nottingham's really good, but well, maybe it would make my short list because I feel like I would play that outside of parties a lot too. Mm-hmm. Actually, we would do we play more so outside of parties. I probably don't even bring it out at parties, right? Because of the player count, though, right? But you know, different people's experiences, different people's party and how many people you have changes things right so because i mean you might have 15 people over but only five or six of them want to play games right and everybody else is off in the kitchen doing weird adult stuff right (laughs) my honorable mention is panic on wall street oh yeah okay now the only reason i put this as an honorable mention because i don't even know if it'd be on my top 10 because it is a little bit more deep than some of the other games right it's not a game I think another thing for me with parties that we have a lot of people at or at least, you know, eight, nine people or whatever, I don't want to have to explain too many rules. And there is a lot more explanation on that game. Yeah. It's, it's not a whole lot. It's taking into account that there will be uh, a casual non-gamer type right. at the party. Spotfall, I can explain in like five seconds, basically, and Happy Salmon in, in, in five seconds. Right. And, Two rooms in the boom is probably a little longer, but if you don't add tons of rolls, you can just be like, here's what you need to do. Just go with it. Right. And they can get away with it for one game and then you explain the rest. And One Night Ultimate Werewolf is probably the only one that's like a little bit more involved than, that might be a little bit more harder to explain than Panic on Wall Street, but I feel like people get uh, werewolf so much quicker. Yeah, I was going to say, because I, I know the, the experience I talked about on here before was with people who had no idea about games or anything, and they all it clicked right away, so it, yeah, it wasn't I, too bad. You think they would have a harder time with Panic on Wall Street? Um, I would think so, because it, it's... It's a lot of stock and figuring out, well, if I spend this much money on this stock, then am I going to get a really good return? It's a lot more thinking like right. that rather than social deductions. So. Yep. Number one, Matt. Yep. What do you think it is? It's a uh, fake artist. No, no that should be on here. Oh no, no, no. Okay, sorry. Dead last. Oh yeah, dead yeah. last. Okay, yeah. yeah. Dead last. This new smirk and dagger game is freaking awesome. Yes. Okay. We've talked about it on the podcast, so there's an. You can go back to one of the episodes. I don't remember which one, but it was like one of the first games we talked about. It's on also YouTube if you type in Meeple Core or Space Dead Last, but man you 12 people first off and it's definitely a game it's one of probably one of the only games i've played where people will come and go while the game's in in session Mm -hmm. so at conventions if you know we're playing and you got 12 people two people leave we play with 10 we don't start over who cares right another person comes in now we got 11 cool whatever a lot of the other games i'm not talking like one night ultimate werewolf because you finish a game before playing the next game right this is like the only game I've ever had people like hot drop and hot swap out. So. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. I, I didn't know that, and it sounds nuts, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Not really, because usually the people who are winning stay in. Right. And so people coming in, they're really just at a handicap, and you don't really care. Right. And it's not really that long of a game anyway. So, anyway, Dead Last, awesome game. Yeah. Yeah. What's like your number one? I, I feel my list is so awful. I, I don't know. Uh, I do like this game a lot. And again, it because it, it, it'll it play six. And like I said, that was kind of my parameter. If it plays six plus, then... I, six plus is what I did. I just happened to pick games that play a lot more. Than right. And, and this game is fairly easy to, to teach uh, to casual people and everything. Uh, but it, I think it's just fun because you see all the, the cutthroatiness come out. But uh, Survive... Fair enough. Uh, like I said, it's not the, I don't know, most people might not even consider it a party game, but <laughs> I am right now, and that's what I'm doing. Yeah, this list was pretty bad, Tim. But look, we've talked about Survive as well, <laughs> and honestly, like I said, it depends on your atmosphere of a party. Right. Because, remember, at the beginning of this episode, I read off, <clears throat> what did I say? Our top games, you don't have to be drunk to have fun with at parties. Right. Right. Now, a lot of my games, you can be drunk and still have a good time. Yours, not so much because it's a little bit more thinky. But 
it doesn't really matter because it depends on the people and it depends on the party and the atmosphere of the party. If there's loud music playing in the background and stuff like that, some of these games don't apply. Right. You may have to find another room to play in, but we don't we don't really have parties like that. Right. Interesting question. So as far as the viewers, it, it, it's interesting to see what you all think. You know, comment below if you're watching this on YouTube. Otherwise, uh, send us uh, some emails at meeplecore at gmail.com and say what type of party atmosphere do you have and, and who's a, whose list do you not really agree with more, but maybe find yourself the, those type of games that you're playing at parties more so. Right. Some of the, some of this might just be more family gathering, but that's still a party. Right. Oh, I, I think that's kind of what I went with i went more of like like i said uh either my birthday or my kids birthdays because they usually if it's if it's uh one of the kids birthdays that we have with just my mom and dad it's let's bring a game right they'll tell me bring sheriff of nottingham they'll tell me bring survive yeah most people i guess might say that's more family board game night right if that's the type of parties you have you know i mean was there food involved? No, there, it's a party. They got they got the happy birthday thing hanging down from. Oh the, yeah, I I totally must have just been thinking of something. Like yeah, that. you no, did it, say happy it, birthday. It's a, it's a birthday party, right? It's the the, the birthday party <laughs> that we have for uh, our family. If it's the kids or me or my wife or yeah, whatever. see, I think it's appropriate then. If those games work for your parties and family and then stuff that's coming out, then that's cool, right? So mine just me. Mine are more typical, like when you think party game, but party game could be sub, it's subjective based on the person who's who's experiencing it, what type of party they have. And stuff, right. So, 